evening to tonight's council meeting. Thank you everybody for coming. This is a March 18th meeting of the Casaganonde City Council. First item on the agenda is a call to order. Please make note that everyone is present. So noted. And do we have anybody from the EAM here tonight? Hey, Pat Lambert. Mr. Lambert. Mr. Lambert, would you mind? Oh, that'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> giving, giving tonight's invocation. <laughs> Since we had a guest, a, a guest in the audience yeah, is qualified. Well, I might not. Huh. <laughs> is it form? Do I just say, please join me in prayer? Do I have to be form? Uh -huh. Please join me in prayer. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to come together and um, just uh, do work for uh, the betterment of Casa Grande. Thank you for um, our elected officials and state staff who uh, work hard to make Casa Grande an amazing place to live. Um, I thank you for uh, their efforts. I thank you for the time that they put in. Thank you for their willingness to uh, have people be mad at them sometimes. Um, I pray that you will uh, bless uh, tonight. Certainly, I have vested interest in tonight, and I would pray that uh, they would... Uh, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to pray for that. <laughs> I pray that you bless tonight's meeting. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Donna. Th thank you, Mr. Lemberg. <laughs> Mayor McFarland, regarding our minutes tonight, uh, I move we accept this or approve the City Council regular meeting minutes from March 4th and accept for the record the Arts and Humanities Commission minutes from, meeting minutes from February 5th, the Casa Grande Youth Commission minutes from January 12th, Fire Personnel Retirement Board minutes from December 7th, Fire Personnel Retirement Boards from Fe Fe February 14th. Planning and Zoning Commission minutes from February 7th, and the Board of Adjustment minutes from October 22nd. And did you go to every one of those? Yeah. I, I don't, at least three quarters of them. I'll <laughs> second that. It, it moved that we accept for the record the. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the minutes are approved. Claims against the city, D1. Mayor McFarland, oh. I move approval of the claims against the city for February 27th and March 12th as presented. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded to approve the claims for February 27th and March 12th. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the claims are approved. Next item is a meeting agenda approval. Mr. Raines, any changes? Anyone from the council? Okay. All right, seeing none, then I'll uh, accept a motion to approve tonight's meeting agenda. So move. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the agenda. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Uh, next item is consent <coughs> agenda. All items listed with an asterisk are considered routine matters and will be enacted by one motion, one roll call vote of the council. There'll be no separate discussion of these items unless a council member or member of the public so requests in which event the item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered in its normal sequence of the agenda. Does anyone have anything you want to pull off? Anyone from the audience? Okay. Seeing none, then um, I will take a motion to um, approve. So move. Second. Second. Okay. Gloria, can I get a roll call vote, please? Yes. 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 All right, next item on the agenda is public comments. Item H. I do have one speaker card here. Ms. Kim Vandenberg, do you want to approach the Lectern, please. Please state your name and your address, please. 
My name is Kim Vennenberg in 9685 West Pasadena in Casa Grande. And uh, we are very honored to be here this evening uh, to say thank you uh, to the city of Casa Grande. Uh, the Wall That Heals, as you know, was just here recently. And it brought together veteran and non-veteran -veter organizations from across the county to work together to bring this exhibit into uh, Casa Grande. And I wanted to share, Palmer's going to be right, some things that were left at the wall. Uh, we were able to uh, keep everything that was left at the wall, and they'll be on display uh, at the center um, forever. Uh, this is a hand-painted rock that somebody took a lot of time to paint. And on the back of it are eight names uh, that are on the wall. And it was left uh, there on the bottom. I brought a youth. Uh, we had 1,410 youth from across Pinal County uh, come and tour. They were, they were from Casa Grande Union, Blackwater Elementary, Picacho, Eloy, Taltec, Arizona City, Red Rock, and Casa Grande Elementary that came to tour. And um, one of the kids sent this back the next day. Dear Joe, I got an etching of your name while at, on a field trip yesterday. I didn't think to leave anything, so I had someone bring you a flower. You'll always be remembered by me. Thank you so, so much for your service. All peace and love. And then I brought one from one of the veterans. It was a wedding picture. And I'm not going to say the name, but it says, Dear Eddie, my high school friend, comrade in arms, and an American hero. Kathy remarried and I'm told has a beautiful family. I miss you and wish you had come home with me. I know God has taken good care of you. And it won't be too many more years and we will meet again. This wall has kept your memory alive for me these past 52 years. So he left that um, at the wall for his friend. And I can tell you um, so many stories were shared. Um, there were a lot of people that were volunteers that said, can I come back tomorrow just so they could help uh, people find names or talk about the wall. And it was an amazing journey uh, for our team uh, to get this done. We had 30 sponsors and uh, the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Fund team that came with it predicted that we had 9,000 plus visitors over those few days that the wall was here. And uh, I think that's pretty amazing. Um, I know everybody kept saying, there's cars all the way down Thornton Road and just everywhere. and, and we, I'm so glad we got extra golf carts because we only planned on two because we didn't know, but we had five. But it was really awesome. Uh, every uh, day we raised and lowered enough flags to make sure that everybody that sponsored this wall uh, would receive a flag. And um, Eloy, Casa Grande, Maricopa, Florence, Coolidge, and Santan communities, people stepped up to help raise the money uh, to bring the wall in. But I also made a big boo-boo. And I'm here to say I'm sorry to the mayor because <laughs> the, <laughs> I am so sorry, sir. <laughs> he was on the agenda to speak on Saturday morning and everything kind of went a little crazy with our electric and everything. And I even showed him where he was on the agenda. And um, at 8 o'clock Saturday night, Palmer comes over there and he goes, did the mayor speak today? And I go, yeah. Um, no. <laughs> but I want to publicly apologize to you, sir. And I also want to say thank you when you saw how many Vietnam veterans came to be pinned. You stepped up and you helped us uh, get that done. So I want to say thank you very much. And we brought you a t-shirt as a peace offering. <laughs> <laughs> but we also wanted to present to the mayor and the city council, if you guys would come down, please, the flag uh, that was flown uh, at the wall. 
and a certificate of appreciation that says, the wall that heals, Pinal County team, thanks you for your sponsorship of the wall that heals. The exhibit stands as a symbol of America's honor and recognition of the men and women who served and sacrificed their lives in the Vietnam War. Inscribed on the wall are the names of more than 58,000 men and women who gave their lives or remain missing. This flag presented to you as a sponsor was flown at Dave White Park to honor all who served in Vietnam. During the time the wall that heals was on display, March 7th to March, March 10th, City of Casa Grande. Do you forgive me? Thank you. It's my chair. Hey, Robert Miller, 128 East Brenda Circle. Um, in regards to the wall that came, obviously, Kim and HOHP and everybody that put that together and being out there for that, it was obviously an amazing thing. Hopefully, everybody here got the opportunity to be out there at some point. Um, and so, it was an awesome experience, and then speaking to the pinning portion of it, which I was a part of, uh, I want to say that I think we pinned probably close to 300 Vietnam veterans that day or that weekend, um, which is an amazing way to say thank you to all of them. And so having that opportunity here in Casa Grande was an excellent uh, just environment to be a part of an experience. So thank yes. you, Kim. Thank you, Kim, to all, everybody who helped. Okay, is there anybody, any, anyone else? This is the open mic part of the meeting. <laughs> Good evening, John McGuire, 941 East Penny Lane. Obviously impossible to follow that presentation, but I seem to get behind Kirk McCarville and people like that that are these great speakers often. So uh, again, it was an amazing Saturday morning there that day, so I was pleased to be a part of that as well. Uh, different topic. I want to thank the city for some really small things that are making a big impact with happy citizens lately. Uh, first of all, I want to congratulate the mayor. It sounds like somehow miraculously the freeway that couldn't be done in five years now can be done in five years somehow. So I'm sure there was a lot of door pounding and fist waving to get that moved into the five-year plan. So congratulations and thank you for that, Mayor. I'm sure others were involved as well, but, but uh, I know that was a priority for you and for many of us, so thank you for that. Secondly, some smaller things. Mr. Lewis and Mr. Itell have done some things that recently that made the city social media world very happy. Things you don't think about. Left turn arrows into Walmart and the hospital. Amazing response that we just, you know, we take that little time to put those little lights up there and the people are just <coughs> overjoyed that something happened. The left turn lanes finally getting extended on Treckle this week mm -hmm. and doing it on a Sunday so we don't have as much traffic disruption all really, really great things. So I just want to make sure we remember these little things that people care about a lot as you go into the budget session here starting next week, I think it is. So uh, really thank you very much, Kevin and your teams and Dwayne, and uh, keep those things coming because we like it. Thank you. Thank you, John. Anyone else? Okay, seeing no one, and I'll close the public comment sections. And we'll now it's an official meeting, John. We'll move to item I-1, consideration of uh, resolution number 5163. 
Selena? Mayor and members of council, tonight staff recommends that the city council approve the use of a CDWG vehicle, contract vehicle, to initiate and maintain a Microsoft Enterprise Agreement in an amount not to exceed $45,000. This investment supports the city council's strategic plan um, by ensuring that all infrastructure, including technology, is managed in an effect effective and efficient manner and in a fiscally responsible manner as well. Um, this agreement would be the foundation of how we would consolidate 625 operating system licenses for Windows, as well as Microsoft software, database so software, and then the related software assurance plans. Right now, those are on, on disparate terms under different volume pricing agreements, and so we have to manage those separately. Um, the, the software assurance is really the important piece because what that allows us to do is have a, a critical, um, sustainable upgrade path. So when technology <coughs> changes, then we can upgrade our technology. That's especially important as we move forward into 2020. Microsoft, as you, as you all know, we use um, Microsoft Office 365 for our email. That will no longer be compatible with things like uh, Office 2010, Office 2013. And so this upgrade path will be very critical in being able to maintain the tools that we use for a day -to -day, from a day-to-day -day, um, business standpoint. Um, it also has an upside. There's a lot of flexibility in how we'll be able to deploy software. Um, there, there should be a long-term cost reduction um, as well as simplified legal compliance. Right now, if we were to go under an audit, we would have to be under audit under all those different disparate terms, and so it cons consolidates that. Um, as well as moving to this program, it gives us better encryption, so being able to protect sensitive data, and then also um, giving us some enterprise-grade um, channels to push out software. And so with that, um, that's kind of the summary. I'm happy to answer any questions. Anybody have any questions? Bob? Is this an <coughs> annual fee for this licensing? It would be. So this is actually, um, this fee would include 100 licenses of the 625. Um, as you sit on the CIP review team, you'll see a CIP project for the remainder. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Seeing none, then uh, can I get a resolution number, please, Gloria? Resolution number 5163, a resolution of the Council of the City of Casa Grande, Arizona, accepting a bid from CDW Government LLC to initiate and maintain a Microsoft Enterprise Agreement authorizing the expenditure of public funds in an initial amount not to exceed 45000 annually and authorizing the execution of a contract with or purchase order to CDW Government LLC in accordance with the terms submitted to the Arizona State bid list. Mayor McFarland, I move approval of resolution number 5163 as presented, and here's how much space it took. <laughs> Second. Does want to read it all? Read every word, yes. Wow. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Gloria, can I get a roll call vote, please? Councilmember Huddleston? Yes. Council Member Fitzgibbons? Yes. Council Member Herman? Yes. Council Member Courtson? Yes. Council Member pa Powell? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem McBride? Yes. <coughs> Mayor McFarland? Yes. All right, moving to item I2, consider ordinance number 3128. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Uh, this topic is uh, obviously regarding the Boys and Girls Club lease uh, for the new recreation center. Um, the Boys and Girls Clubs of the Casa Grande Valley have been a longtime partner uh, with the city of Casa Grande. They currently are leasing the space behind uh, the auditorium for, for $1. And um, we, this lease would move them into the new recreation center and to outline their, the space that they would be occupying. Here's a, a little bit of a floor plan. The green uh, areas are where the Boys and Girls Club uh, offices will be in classrooms and, and computer labs and, and et cetera. Uh, it'll be on the uh, west side of the building, I believe. And the gray, pla the areas covered in gray will be the shared places, half of the gym and, and two of the classrooms. That's on the first floor. On the second floor, there is a, um, a Boys and Girls Club will have some office space on the second floor of the Recreation Center. So I quickly want to highlight a few of the lease agreements and then open it up to some questions. Um, the term would commence on May 1st, 2019 and would terminate on April uh, April 30, 2024. 
And there will be five-year increments with three extensions available uh, for a total of 20 years. Um, the, the rent for the per year would be 40000 per year and can be re renegotiated after every term. And this 40000 includes janitorial maintenance and landscaping costs. The Boys and Girls Club will pay their proportionate share of utility costs, which will be capped at 20000 for the first two years. Staffing of the teen center, if any, will be outlined in the annual services agreement with the Boys and Girls Club. The Boys and Girls Club will operate designated after-school programming and additional youth programming when school is not in session. Boys and Girls Club will have the right to use shared spaces, um, and Boys and Girls Club is responsible for all costs associated with furniture, uh, fixtures, and equipment located in their offices. And the city will have the option to purchase those upon the termination of the lease. And uh, with that, uh, the staff recommends that the mayor and council approve the lease agreement between the city of Costa Grande and the Boys and Girls Club. Just a comment. <clears throat> you know, I know this is something that's been going on for years, and, you know, I just really appreciate the relationship that, you know, the Boys and Girls Club has with the city and has worked with us. And Matt, looks like you have your whole gang here. Um, <laughs> and so it doesn't, it doesn't surprise us because, you know, it's something that, you know, we're excited to have this partnership. And, you know, I know from the beginning, the Boys and Girls Club, you know, came, the name came up when we were looking at um, partnerships. So we're really excited about this and the, the people that you serve. And I'm excited to have the youth, you know, in part of this community center. You know, this gives them the opportunity to get in there and see what it's all about and, and, and use it. Um, so hopefully there we can get the families involved also. So, um, you know, I, I feel really good about the lease. Appreciate, you know, staff, you know, Brett and Larry and everyone. Um, this is something that we're, we're really excited about and, and I'm glad. I think it's, it's really fair and, and I'm happy that, you know, we all, you know, we're ready to move forward on this. Mary? I uh, want to compliment you on the, uh, on the contract and the agreement itself. Uh, for those that have a chance to take a look at it, it's very fair. It's good for the city. It's good for Boys and Girls Club. It's really very comprehensive. It takes in all eventualities. Uh, I don't think there's a lot of uh, anything left to chance. Uh, it's a good contract. Uh, it's good for everybody. And again, welcome to the Boys and Girls Club to our community center. You know, just a just a comment to echo what Mary said. I think that if we took the Boys and Girls Club name out of the agreement and just looked at the agreement itself, that it's very fair for anyone. So it's not uh, it's not just the Boys and Girls Club. It would be for anyone. So we looked at that from a standpoint of it's a business for us as well. So I feel very comfortable about it and uh, applaud the Boys and Girls Club, but the city staff that worked on this as well. Well, I, I just want to voice what a great partnership this is. Um, we share all the same goals. We want uh, a healthy, uh, active lifestyle for the youth of our community. And uh, my hat is off to the Boys and Girls Club for addressing those things on a daily basis and I, I feel proud that the city has partnered with you and uh, that we're working together on this great right. I just not to belabor but thank you and just so everyone knows I was president of the board when I hired Matt Lindbergh as the director <laughs> <laughs> just throw that out there so we have you to blame for that right, right. <laughs> Mr. Powell I want everybody to know I'm sitting by the, the first president of the <laughs> No, I just want to say uh, congratulations. It's been a long road, and you've reached the final destination, and I think it's going to be a, a great facility for everybody involved, and, and I'm glad that uh, Boys and Girls Club very definitely is involved in this, and uh, we're, we're, as I say, about ready to in inhabit it. Uh, and just to echo everybody else's comments up here, and um, in, in all disclosure I'm also still on the board of the Boys and Girls Club so um, Matt did you want to say anything or make a comment you're welcome to us <laughs> and thank and you want to thank you thank your board for being here thank you all no um, lots of thanks this is this what I want to do certainly thank council for including us um, thank Larry and Brett and Stephen and Steve let's 
work on hiring people with different names next time. But uh, <laughs> Stephen and, and just everybody who works on this project has been a, a, been a um, incredibly inclusive for us. Um, we've been our, our opinions have been heard the whole time. We've been a part of the the, the process. What we're most excited about is we're going to be able to serve more young people every day, and, and we think do it more effectively. Um, and, and so thank you. We've got a number of board members today and, and staff, and so thank you guys for being a part of this. Yeah, process. just stand up if you would. Just stand up yeah, the stand board up and members. Wave. We're a, a scary group. <laughs> It really just thank you. I mean, we, we appreciate the, we also appreciate the partnership um, and, and, and look forward to what we will be able to do uh, for young people in this community with this facility. So thank you. Thank you, thank you Matt. Thank you, Matt. I do want to have one comment, though, about your tie. You always tell me that you wear a tie when you're asking for money, but you're going to get charged money tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, before we do vote, I do want to ask Brett, as, as a member of the board, um, is it, should I recuse myself um, on this vote? Thank you, uh, Mayor. Under our conflict of interest laws, if you are a member of a nonprofit board and you are not compensated, you do not have a conflict and you do not need to recuse yourself from the vote. All right. Well, if they doubled my salary, it would still be nothing. So. <laughs> All right. Okay, uh, seeing that, then can I get a. a is it a resolution or an ordinance number, please, Gloria? Ordinance number 3128, an ordinance of the Council of the City of Casa Grande, Arizona, approving a lease agreement between the City of Casa Grande and the Boys and Girls Clubs of Casa Grande Valley and authorizing the execution of an agreement by the City Manager. Mayor McFarland, I move for approval of ordinance number 3128 as presented. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Gloria, can I get a roll call vote, please? Councilmember Huddleston. Yes. Councilmember Fitzgibbons. Yes. Councilmember Herman. Yes. Councilmember Courtson. Yes. Councilmember Powell. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem McBride. Yes. Mayor McFarland. Yes. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks for coming. Thank you. <laughs> you can stay. I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right, item I3, consider ordinance number 3129, accepting sole source proposal from Motorola Solutions. Good evening, Mayor, Council. Uh, staff recommends accepting a sole source proposal uh, from Motorola Solutions uh, to provide seven portable radios uh, to the police department, authorizing the expenditure of public funds in the amount not to exceed $52,353.68. Uh, and authorizing the execution of a contract with our authority uh, a purchase order to Motorola Solutions and authorizing the transfer of budget authority between accounts. Uh, the purchase of these radios, the seven radios, uh, are new radios which the uh, police department is transferring from the current 700 uh, 7,000 APX radios that we have to the new uh, APX 8,000 radios. These new radios would give us the ability to uh, communicate with other agencies and ag better communications, and it also allows us to have the 800 megahertz capability to, uh, again, talk with other agents and uh, much better safety uh, with our officers on the roadway. Uh, with that, I'll be able to answer any questions that you may have. Reggie, these seven, don't they replace seven that are basically totally obsolete? That is correct, sir. The uh, 700 will be actually obsolete in uh, 2023, so we're preparing and, and purchasing radios now so that when we get to that point, all our radios are compatible and capable of communication. Uh, Motorola would no longer be uh, operate, uh, doing maintenance on those radios or any other service, so therefore we need to begin making that move at this time. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Or Seeing none, thank you, Reg. Yes, sir. Um, I'll consider an ordinance number, please, Gloria. 
Ordinance number 3129, an ordinance of the Council of the City of Casa Grande, Arizona, accepting a sole source proposal from Motorola Solutions, Inc. to provide seven portable radios, authorizing expenditure of public funds in amount not to exceed $52,353.68 and authorizing the execution of a contract with or purchase order to Motorola Solutions, Inc., and authorizing the transfer of budget authority between accounts. Mayor McFarland, I move for the adoption of ordinance number 3129 as presented. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Gloria, can I get a roll call vote, please? Councilmember Huddleston. Yes. Councilmember Fitzgibbons. Yes. Councilmember Herman. Yes. Councilmember Courtson. Yes. Councilmember Powell. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem McBride. Yes. Mayor McFarland. Yes. All right, item I-4, consider ordinance number 3130. Public Works, Mr. Kevin. Thank you. Staff recommends that the Mayor and City Council authorize the City Manager to execute a contract for professional services with Horrocks Engineers Incorporated out of Phoenix, Arizona, with a total bid amount of $72,000 and a $3,000 contingency for a total not to exceed $75,000. Peart Road from O'Neill, to Cottonwood Lane is currently uh, two lanes northbound and one lane southbound. Uh, if authorized, this contract will provide for the uh, design of the uh, remainder of that build out for that uh, arterial segment. Um, the, the, at the end of the um, current project that's happening with the uh, rec center, and I'm sure you've all been there. Um, it's, it's moving along very quickly. We had at one time uh, considered including this project as part of that effort, but we looked to try and uh, uh, have an opportunity to work with the developer to the south that uh, was currently looking at uh, making some changes to their, their PAD, so we thought we would try and partner with them to complete the rest of that with uh, their development. But it turned out that they were only going to be um, modifying their PAD to basically sell that property, so they were not interested in, in partnering. But through that process, we were able to uh, get that uh, property owner to dedicate the needed right away to finish these improvements. Um, the improvements do uh, fit into the uh, City Council's focus areas, improving the travel system on a major arterial. Uh, our current goal is to improve our uh, system uh, wide by 25%, and it does it through this uh, uh, improved capacity. We did uh, do a qualifications-based solicitation and uh, looked at eight firms. And through that evaluation, uh, Horrocks uh, turned out to be the uh, most responsive and, and uh, uh, qualified uh, firm. So we are gonna be moving forward with them. At a later date, we will be coming back with a construction contract that will actually uh, cover the construction. And that's currently in this uh, uh, CIP process that we're in the process of uh, uh, bringing to council here uh, later this spring. We do have adequate funds in this year's uh, fiscal year CIP project. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. So Kevin, this is the section that's from where our current improvements at the community center down to Cottonwood? Correct, so it would fill, it would finish that one mile segment of the period arterial. And this is just for the engineering piece? This is just the engineering. Uh, we don't anticipate that taking too long, but we do need to wait for budget authority next year's uh, fiscal year to uh, move the construction portion forward. Okay, anybody else have any questions? Okay, seeing none, then I'll consider a uh, ordinance number, please. Ordinance number 3130, an ordinance of the Council of the City of Casa Grande, Arizona, accepting the proposal for professional services from Horrocks Engineering, Inc to provide design services, authorizing expenditure of public funds in amount not to exceed 75,000 and authorizing the execution of a contract. Mayor McFarland, I move. Oh, go ahead. Okay, <laughs> for the adoption of ordinance number 3130 is presented. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Gloria, can I get a roll, roll call vote please on ordinance 3130? Council member Huddleston. Yes. Council Member Fitzgibbon. Yes. Council Member Herman. Yes. Council Member Courtson. Yes. Council Member Powell. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem McBride. Yes. <coughs> Mayor McFarland. Yes. 
All right, that's approved. I-5, consider resolution number 5165. Back Thank to you, you, Kevin. Staff recommends that the mayor and city council authorize the city manager to enter into a contract or issue a purchase order to uh, Precision Concrete Cutting Incorporated for trip hazard elimination services in an amount not to uh, exceed $34,270. Uh, Precision Concrete Cutting uh, conducted a sidewalk trip assessment in our downtown area. Uh, we chose to uh, target the downtown area because it is one of the older areas uh, with uh, high um, uh, pedestrian traffic and has also generated uh, some claims in the past from uh, trips that have occurred in that downtown area. So we went through and uh, we identified 700, excuse me, 478 uh, specific trip hazards that are within the 0.25 to 2 inch range, which is considered a trip hazard. Uh, anything that was identified that's larger than that, we've uh, got that mapped out and we're going to be taking care of that with the street forces uh, through our normal concrete uh, repair <coughs> projects over the summer. Um, we really looked forward to uh, taking advantage of, of this uh, job order contract uh, through the city of Maricopa the contract number 1746 uh, to allow us to use uh, that contract to uh, uh, procure these services. Um, we are going to be using uh, some leftover funds in our ADA improvement allocation in this fiscal year. We currently have a, a balance of $48,463 available. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. I don't have a, a question. I just have a comment. It was kind of scary for me to be reading that there was 478 potential <laughs> threats, but this comes out to about 70, 71, 72 dollars a fix, and I think that that's oh, a mm -hmm. very small price to pay to make sure that people are safe. So, good job, Bob. Um, just an observation, and then a question about how we did this. Did, was there a price that we paid for the? Uh, for the survey in the first place that identified the 478 areas and what type of oversight did the city provide as far as um, coming up with that number and reviewing whatever their report was? So there's no initial cost. The uh, company came out and did the assessment at their cost with the hopes of getting a contract. No guarantee but we had made sure that uh, the contract that we were able to use to procure these services met all of our procurement requirements, and it did. So we, we went through and looked at that. Um, we didn't look at every single 478 location. Of course, when we uh, go through and if we're approved and, and move forward with this project, we'll inspect all the, all the uh, process once it's completed. But we did look at samples. We took, you know, a block here and a block there, looked at what they were finding, what was inside their scope and what was outside their scope, and we were satisfied that they were covering everything that we thought was potential hazards. Okay. Thank you. Kevin, will we continue to do these types of projects and in other areas in the community? We currently spend a lot of time doing these types of repairs. Um, during our annual concrete uh, replacement program, we go out anytime there's a uh, concrete that heaves in the heat of the summer, we go ahead and we assess that area and we identify and try to repair those areas as we come across them. This was an opportunity for us to really focus on the historic downtown area that was quite frankly constructed when there weren't standards that we are now held to uh, when we construct things. So this is an area that has generated some claims in the past and quite frankly claims can out outpace uh, this uh, amount very quickly uh, with very little effort. So we thought this was a good effort to really show our program and then if we see a need for it in the future, um, we can definitely look at taking advantage of this company in the future. Thanks. Anyone else? Okay. Seeing none, thank you, Kevin. I'll consider resolution number 5165, please. Resolution number 5165, a resolution of the Council of the City of Casa Grande, Arizona, accepting a bid from Precision Concrete Cutting, Inc., 
for trip hazard elimination services, authorizing the expenditure of public funds in an amount not to exceed $34,270, and authorizing the execution of a contract with or purchase order to Precision Concrete Cutting, Inc. Mayor McFarland. I would move that we approve resolution number 5165 as presented. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Gloria, can I get a roll call vote, please, on resolution 5165? Council Member Huddleston. Yes. Council Member Fitzgibbons. Yes. Council Member Herman. Yes. Council Member Courtson. Yes. Council Member Powell. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem McBride. Yes. Mayor McFarland. Yes. All right, we'll move to item K, K1. Consider adoption of a notice of intent to increase water and wastewater rates. And let me say, this is just a notice, so if we had a need to raise them, then we're not saying we're going to raise them. This is just a, no a public notification of a potential rate increase, which is required by, um, which is required by our, our charter and statutes. So this is not a... It's not a notice that we are going to increase the rates, just that we have the potential that we can. Yes, sir, Mr. Powell. Mayor, just to point out that, that uh, this this is doesn't include Arizona water. People connected this is for a small water uh, element that we have, so so nobody gets upset about their water rate going up. But well, it's also waste. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Okay, that's a good point. Selena, did you want to add anything to that? No, we, you kind of recapped all of it, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, but as, you, as you said, we're, we're asking the council to consider the adoption of the notice of, of intent. And um, again, this does not affect the fees. It just provides the notice required by Arizona revised statutes. And then it also names a public um, hearing date as well as May 20th. Okay. Bob? This is probably impossible and doesn't meet the law, but I, I wish it said notice of intent to review and potentially adjust. <laughs> exactly. um, it kind of, it, it, with this notice, it sounds like it's a foregone conclusion. Right. Yeah. And I, I don't think we're there yet, but. No. Mm -hmm. No, we're not. But I'm assuming this language is required. It's a better description. That, the statute requires fairly specific language just to let people know if you did send out a notice that said, you know, we're just going to review, that might not give proper notice if you elected to increase it. Okay. Heather understands it, so. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? All right. Then uh, I'll, con well, I'll consider a, somebody uh, closing. Oh. No, there's no resolution. It's just act. We need to pass a okay. motion. I move approval. I second. <laughs> All right, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? I know we're like. All right. Okay. Let the public notice be noticed. <laughs> All right. No executive session tonight, and we do have reports. So I think uh, I think what I'll do is I'm going to start over here with Bob. You can on your reports for tonight. Look at my note. <laughs> uh, we, we've kind of touched on it tonight, uh, but uh, Donna and I are participating in the, in the CIP committee, and uh, what, what an eye opener that is. Uh, the cost of things is uh, is staggering, and. Uh, uh, my hat is off to uh, city staff that goes to all of the work to uh, research and, and uh, justify and explore options. Um, we've, we've only completed our first day of the process and I've learned so much today about public works. Uh, <laughs> It's expensive. <laughs> and, it's like drinking through a fire hose. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I also, I, I, I think, uh, uh, other members of the council probably have more to say on this topic than I do, but the, the wall that heals, um, I, I can't pass without saying something about it. Um, I, uh, I took my daughter there because she had, she didn't really even know what it was. And uh, I took her out there to show her. I had seen the wall in uh, Washington, D.C., and I did not expect it to compare to that. And boy, was I uh, wrong. 
it uh, it hits you right in the chest, um, uh, just like the wall in Washington D.C. did. Um, my daughter came away shocked and crying, and and uh, and it. it uh, it, it is such a wonderful uh, effort that people have made to, to bring that to our city, um, especially to those that have never seen it before. It's, it's really, really touching. That's all. All right, thank you, Bob. Matt? Yeah, I got a couple things. Um, the Youth Commission this weekend is, is handling, is sponsoring a uh, canine walk and adoption type event and everything out at the Paul Mason. So that will be Saturday morning out there. And back by ever popular demand will be the day of shredding on April 27th. And we're back to our original location at 1001 North Pinal Avenue at the uh, First American Credit Union. And Kevin's group has been a big help what with date? that. So what date again, Matt? The 27th. 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 Oh, after tax day. And after proms too. Just, it's always a fifth figure that time of year and when we do our events. <laughs> Um, I enjoyed immensely the Urban Land Institute uh, seminar we had downtown. Uh, two, that was like two weeks ago, I think. Two weeks ago. And it was a great exercise. And I think I learned that we have a lot of assets already that we just need to market. That's not it, but if we can market what we have, then that will help improve everything else. And that was a study to figure out how to help revitalize more the downtown. And especially going along with that is our Neon Sign Park, which has got a couple signs this week going up so it's looking really cool I drove by that um, I had an opportunity uh, to meet with the state superintendent of public instruction and I expressed to her how was our cities as a city council as part of our plan to work with education and how the rural schools often don't get acknowledged and she has already met with the rural superintendent specifically Pinal County and our and our local superintendent so I'm very excited about this new plan she has and she is a dynamic person and very different than any politician and i found out the youngest elected female statewide official in the united states of america wow. is our state superintendent of public wow. instruction who was a speech pathologist last year and is now the superintendent of public instruction wow. <laughs> so it was a very neat story and it was a great opportunity to meet her and of course i'm going to brag on my wife who got the um 2019 Governor's Arts Award for Education. So, so thank you to everyone who helped with that. And it was very exciting and a great event for her. And she couldn't sleep for like three nights. I don't think. <laughs> so, thank you. Mr. Powell? <coughs> well, I enjoyed that too. And, and she was the one that was surprised because she didn't know who the winner was. <laughs> and uh, we were all had our fingers crossed and then found out ahead of time that that she had one but kept it secret so she had no idea <laughs> she had no idea and, and it was fun to watch her just nervous as could be but the uh the, the downtown uh meeting uh there were there was things about that that i thought was impressive and things that that, that i would have questioned some the uh, a lot of the things their idea of building residential in the downtown they're spot on they have a lot of good things going the idea of coming up with an econ uh, economical plan to get people downtown to uh to spend their money and to uh recreate and those type of things uh they didn't really they said well it should be the it should be the the anchor tenant the downtown but i don't know how you get people to go build a bunch of apartments right downtown until you have a reason for that to happen but i think we got a lot of good information and and uh, a lot of good input the uh went to the water meeting several of us were there uh that they had it at the um, and <clears throat> what what continues to bother me on the water meetings is the fact that uh, we don't have enough water we need a new source of water and it doesn't seem like anybody's working on that and and what this uh this plan the contingency plan gives you is a is a pathway to go down the road a little ways before you really have to address it by getting people to leave water in the lake but uh 2020 uh it, it's going to become very realistic probably and and i just uh, i hope somebody in water is working toward looking at it as i say uh 
you saw all the floodwaters that, that happened in the Midwest, and, and uh, that was unusual weather, but uh, the city of Denver gets their water, has a water agreement to get flood water from the Missouri River and uh, through the uh, Army Corps of Engineers. And uh, flood water is about the only undesirable water that's in the country and the only one that people don't really want unless they can use it uh, for another reason. The, uh, I, I enjoyed going out with Lisa to the, the Academy, uh, ASU, and uh, they, they had uh, individuals giving speeches. She was in one room and I was in another room and, and they had the different judges. And I, I just, every time I go out there, I'm really impressed. The, uh, uh, the students are, are just, they all seem to be well-dressed, neat about their appearance and, and uh, very, very friendly and accommodating and, and with a hunger to learn. And uh, so I, I always enjoy going out to do that. And I've, I told her when I left, I'm a, I'm a volunteer anytime you need one. So, but uh, other than that, uh, it was it was a good week. All right, thank you, Mr. Powell. Donna, um, just a couple of things. Uh, thank you to the mayor for allowing me to be at Dutch Brothers for the ribbon cutting. Uh, that was exciting. Very high energy staff out there. <laughs> Um, I think the they get free coffee. coffee. <laughs> Maybe that's it. Um, I too attended the, the water uh, town hall and Mr. Powell's the expert and uh, I'm the student at this point and there's a lot to learn. Um, hats off to Tiffany Shedd uh, for uh, keeping it on track. We had a great panel including Steve Miller. Um, so I really learned a lot. Uh, coffee with a cup was this past Saturday. Um, down at Elliott Park, and that's part of the area of town that we're really trying to focus on. Um, I was really pleasantly um, pleased with the amount of folks that were down there. While we were down there, they did their first block watch meeting. Probably had 15 to 20 uh, people sitting in the park with Officer Anderson, and that was very encouraging to see. And then um, just a reminder, the Leadership Academy starts uh, this Thursday, and I'm really excited. Hats off to Phil for uh, really getting um, the the number of folks up. I think we have 21 or so. Um, so I'm excited. Again, What's that? When, when the Thursday at Thursday. 6. Thursday. six. Oh, yeah. And it's yeah. here. Is it here, Phil? In here. Right. Yes. Yeah, right. So that's encouraging. That's 21. <coughs> so, yep. Yeah. So be there. I'll be there. And like Bob, uh, the CIP um, is very interesting, the process. I know staff have done a lot of work. Uh, Selena has had many sleepless nights and no weekends preparing for that. So I'm encouraged by what we'll see in the, the few days ahead. Mary? Uh, I'm gonna read an email I got from John Morris from uh, Union High School. And this is dealing with uh, Chloe Buchanan, who was one of the girls, and you're gonna have to remind mm -hmm. me, the senior, Chief Senior Science Officer. Yes. So. Okay, for yeah, the festival. From Star Trek, I found out. This yeah. past weekend at the Arizona yeah, North Star Regional Trump. Robotics Tournament in Flagstaff, Chloe Buchanan was selected to represent Arizona as a Dean's List finalist in the first robotics competition world championship in Houston next month. This is a very high honor and is awarded to a student who best exemplifies the ideals of first, gracious professionalism a love for science and technology, and a heart to spread the message of FIRST. This honor is viewed as on the same level as the tournament championship. So I wanted to congratulate Chloe, but also John Morris. He's just kind of the, I don't know where that would be if we didn't have him. He's a retired from uh, GM, uh, and I have to think that he's taken some sacrifices to do this and he does it for the love of the students and he's just, uh, he just continues to amaze me. Mm -hmm. Another thing too is I wanted to uh, give a shout out to the new owners of the promenade. Um, they're attempting and, and making really strong efforts to keep the tenants that are there, to bring in new tenants. And also I was given, they're doing a free concert series at the promenade. Uh, I missed the one, darn it, with the classic rock and blues, and that from when I was a baby, and that, but they do have another one coming up on March 23rd, and it looks like there's going to be food uh, trucks and that, 
and that this is going to be the blues, funk, and R&B. So kind of keep an eye out for that uh, and help our the local <coughs> out there. One other thing is, is love the rec center. I mean, this has been a dream of mine and everybody else's for a long time. Just don't want to forget, too, is that we still have Len Cola. And so Len Cola has a summer kids club uh, asking parents, take a look at that. It might be something that you might be interested in for your children to do uh, for the summer and keep them busy. And of course, they have the men's adult basketball league. So let's keep in mind that we also have Len Cola. Mm -hmm. And that's all I have. Lisa? Um, I just wanted to also talk about the wall at Heels. Um, you know, I know there, for those of you that attended, you saw the many, many volunteers that were out there and all the, just the people that were so involved in having that many people visit. I, I too was so impressed with it. I've been to the one in Washington, D.C. and was just, just shocked to see um, you know how how big it was actually <laughs> so um, but it, it, was, it was just moving to see you know these grown you know men I saw mostly men you know in tears I mean it brought brought back so many memories and you know um, so it, you know my 83 year old dad came and he wasn't in the Vietnam War but you know knew friends and family that were and so he was truly moved, um, you know, to be there. And so I just really thank, I know they left and we weren't really able to say anything, but I was just so impressed and, and, and pleased with all those sponsors and for Kim and her staff at HOHP um, for, for bringing that there. It was just, it was just incredible. So um, yeah, the ASU prep, you know, when you think of the, the educational opportunities that our students have, you know, there, a lot of times we don't promote the good things that are going on in our, in our schools. And you're right, there's so many great things with Mr. Morris. He was my kid's, you know, teacher and was amazing. And, you know, to have ASU prep and, and to see those students, you're right, Dick, it just amazes me that how good they are and the topics that they speak on, it just, I was way way over my head even, but um, but it you know it's great for us to have those opportunities for all of our students. Um, as far as a couple of things coming up, there's a project that the Homeless Coalition is putting on. It's called Project Connect, and on March 29th, um, which is on a Friday from 9 to 12, um, it's there. It's going to be at St. Anthony's Community Center, but it's a, basically a one-day, one-stop shop event that brings um, access to the community of different services and agencies um, um, that for, for the community. So if there's someone that you know needs to speak to someone from legal aid or Sun Life is doing health screenings, they're gonna have people there that are actually gonna be cutting hair, um, you know, um, dental screenings. They're gonna have um, different agencies there. Social Security will be there. Our police department's gonna be there. I think they're gonna be helping with IDs that day. So it's not so much just for home but it's for people that just you know don't know where to go to to get to certain services and it they'll have a one-stop shop right there at st. Anthony's so that's from 9 to 12 um, and then the emergency assistance ministry had a big blood drive last Saturday uh, we had quite a few people show up for that I know the chief was there given blood bright and early he's not here right now but you know, appreciate the chief being there um, it was at the LDS Church and, um, and you know, uh, Matt, I just wanted to congratulate Erica too, because, you know, we're so fortunate to have someone like Erica in our community. You know, the arts, you know, are just sometimes, you know, you don't get the, the publicity and the funding, but Erica just amazes me that she just brings so much talent and energy to the art community. And um, I was just so excited to see she deserves it so much. So I was really excited to see that. Um, and I, I guess that's it. Okay, thank you. Um, well, busy time of year, crazy busy time of year for, for all of us. I know we have uh, events every weekend and everything that's going on, and, and I, so I want to thank all the council members for all your participation in all these events. I know we go, a lot of us go to the same events, and I, I know uh, we all get a lot out of it, get an opportunity to see our community in action. Um, I'm, I've got like five boards that, board meetings that I'm going to this week and next week, so I'm not going to go through them all, but uh, just to, to 
let everybody know that you know we're carrying the banner uh, for the city of Casa Grande, and I know all of us all of us do. And um, you know, John mentioned the I-10 piece. That that was a piece that was uh, slated for 10 years from today. You know, 2019, nine years. Uh, or, yeah, nine years from today. But uh, through a lot of perseverance, not just myself, but a lot of other people as well, uh, we got that moved up and now it's in the five-year plan, which is a small miracle in and of itself. So, mm -hmm. um, even a 20-year plan on Yeah, well, it wasn't even in a plan, so yeah. Um, the ULI piece I'm excited about, I uh, won't we'll go into a lot of detail there, but it was informative, a great insight, I thought. Um, the, uh, and on the I-10 piece, I did forget to mention that the, the study, the RFP uh, request for a, a proposal, actually were due last week. So those proposals have been submitted. So they, they officially will, will begin uh, identifying some uh, engineering company, I'm sure, to start the study. And then I wanted to share, if you haven't seen it in the mail, your new city beat. Mm -hmm. And I wanna publicly thank Phil uh, Burdick, our new PIO, for, for kind of redesigning the City Beat. I think it turned out really nice. If anybody has seen it yet, um, any input or thoughts you might have, I'm sure just uh, let us know. Send us an email. Send Phil, Phil Burdick at City Casa Grande. Um, you can send it to Phil. Don't send it to me. <laughs> but it's got the Dorothy Powell Center in here. It's uh, Palm Island. Palm Island. It's got the new community center, so and it's and it's not a lot of verbiage. It's a lot of interesting information. So, so if you haven't read it, please do. It's it's actually full of good information. Um, let's see. We had a meeting this past Saturday with Tom with Congressman Tom O'Halloran um, that we had an opportunity to talk to him about um, issues with our economic development and some of the concerns we had, and it, it's the usual suspects, it's I-10, it's infrastructure, it's um, water. Those were all uh, topics that we discussed. And this f past Friday, the Southwest Gas, uh, the Fuel for Life, they uh, gave out a couple of uh, grants to a couple of our local charities. The Boys and Girls Club was one, and uh, Against Abuse was another, so it was really nice to see See, and this all money that's put, uh, that's given out by the employees. It's not Southwest Gas money, it's employee money. So I, I commend Southwest Gas for their efforts. And then um, we, I did have a meeting with Megan Malone. She's the new property manager at the Promenade Mall. She has some great ideas. She's very, um, she, she's a real excited person. So <laughs> she, I think she's got some really good ideas and she's got a lot of enthusiasm. I think she's gonna bring, she's moving, building a house here in Casa Grande. So she's committed. That's good. Uh, they are, they're committed to a 10 year plan to turn them all around. So I'm excited to see some of the ideas that she shared with us, which I probably won't share because they're probably shouldn't, shouldn't yet. yet. <laughs> so anyway, uh, there's some good stuff uh, I, I believe some good stuff coming down, down the pipe. Um, we did, we did uh, interview a couple folks tonight for the police advisory board and also the parks and rec advisory board. So I think we have some good candidates there. If anybody is interested, those positions come open all the time. So please keep an eye out for it. We usually post it on our website. And um, obviously, love to have anybody who's interested in volunteering for the city um, be a part of the city. It's, it's your city, so uh, get involved. And then um, this Thursday, Larry and I will be kicking off the Leadership uh, Academy. So if you want to see a, a riveting presentation, it'll be here at uh, 6 o'clock. <laughs> Uh, this next Wednesday, or this Wednesday, I'm actually attending a 2019 Tech and in, uh, Innovation Summit, so I'm looking forward to, to seeing what comes out of that. Um, the rest of this is all busy work, so. Just a reminder, April 4th is the Community Center State of the City. Uh, it starts at 1 o'clock, um, so it, it's, there's no RSVP necessary. It's free. 
So if you're interested and you want to hear uh, the latest and greatest about your city, uh, then you can come and, and also check out the new rec center. Um, and then on April 29th, there's the resource grand, grand isn't it the grand opening on the 29th? 29th, yes, April 29th yes, at the uh, Resource Center in Peart, Peart Center. Mm -hmm. So April 29th, mark your calendars from 11 to 1. And then May 6th is again the grand opening for the rec, Community Rec Center. And that's at 10 o'clock. So I want to make sure that, that everybody has that on their calendars. And then Friday, March 29th is the retirement event for Helen Newharth. So if you're a chamber member and you want to say goodbye to Helen or, or wish her well, uh, please uh, plan to attend. It's uh, 5 to 7 at the property on the 29th of March. So I kind of jumped around there on the dates. Anybody else have any other thing? Anything you want to bring up? All right. Seeing none, then we'll stand adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.